today was to play the video that I submitted for Esri, but we had some volume issues. So I'm going to talk over it while it plays and hopefully, hopefully that works well. So hopefully we can adapt here and figure things out. So like, like was mentioned, I'm presenting on the survey one, two, three inbox method for the neighborhood cleanliness project. And I am Nathan Smith and I work for local Metro government. So just a quick overview of the project that we developed the survey one, two, three inbox method for. It was our neighborhood cleanliness project for our solid waste management team. And we determined that cleanliness plays a vital role in our communities. And we want to find a way to make Louisville a cleaner and brighter in a green city. So we performed litter assessments and usually the way we performed litter assessments was through a paper method and we would actually have the paper and pen in hand as we were walking down streets and in Louisville and tallying the scores. So then we summarized collected data and mapped all the average scores and it was just a longer process because we'd have to transfer all the information from paper documents then to our GIS data so it just made it a more a more complex process than it had to be. So here's a picture of the one of the paper forms that we actually used in the field and you see the street names listed and you have your score and then your types of litter how it got there and then the addresses that significantly contributed to to the litter in that area and then this is the other paper form that would show you where you are on the map and what streets you're walking down and it has it listed according to the number on the other sheet and how it corresponds with that sheet as well and then here's our inbox method as you see, you see the same thing. You see the street, the zone, but just here in our in our survey one, two, three app. And that's also down here. If you see below, it's the list view. And and here's the map view. So when you're in the field, you can actually click on one of these segments and then it'll take you to the survey, the survey form that you can then fill out the information um, according to that street. So now here's my live demonstration. And as you can see, this is Arc Pro. You can also do this in, uh, you can also do this in Arc Desktop. But what you're gonna do is I'm gonna share this web layer. And it might, uh, the screen in the far right might be blocking the uh, right of the screen. But if you minimize that, you'll be able to see the share as layer. So basically, you'll pull up this table, share as layer, go down to publish, and then it'll put your, your information into uh, ArcGIS Online. And one thing to remember when you're doing a web layer is to make sure that, to make sure that all of your information in your attribute table is the way you want it. Because if you change any of these, these attributes, later you have to resubmit the the layer in order to in order to get the new layer um, readily available so if you can make sure that your data is up to date as possible i know sometimes some things change and and you have to make new updates to it but if you can to avoid having to reshare the layer go ahead and make sure that that is shared before you do this share as layer and then publish it on to ArcGIS Online. So here, here's our layer, as you, as you can see, this is the same layer that was in ArcGIS, ArcGIS Pro, and now it's in ArcGIS Online. And what we wanna do when we get here, we're gonna go over here to Settings, and then we're gonna go to Feature Layer, 
And then you want to make sure enable editing, enable sync is on, or it won't pull up correctly whenever you go to the Survey123 desktop app. You can also keep track of created and updated features and keep track of who created and last updated features as well. That, that's just preference. You can add that if you want. It'll just keep track of who in the field is creating and updating features. So once you do that, you're gonna pull up your survey. You're gonna to come to the, you'll have to download Survey123 desktop onto your desktop computer. And then you'll pull up your survey and you'll go down here to feature service and find the feature service that you just created. Ours is neighborhood cleanliness. So we'll type that in. And as you see, our layer comes up and then we click on that layer and go down to create survey. And once we create survey, it'll pull up an Excel spreadsheet. Now the Excel spreadsheet that you're seeing here is more up to date than what would originally pop up. I just pulled up my survey that I'd already created. So this is more filled out than you originally have, but there's a lot of capabilities in survey one, two, three. I would encourage you if you're new to survey one, two, three, look up and just research and find ways that you can make your spreadsheets better and, and have more capabilities. We continually learn stuff in our office and we love this app. So I would encourage you to do that if you're interested in doing other things in Survey123. So, so the one thing that when you first get into your Survey123 Connect, I would encourage you to go to this inbox tab and you're going to go to inbox mode and enable the inbox folder. Because if you don't do this, then you won't have the Survey123 inbox. So I would encourage you to do that first thing, because sometimes when we get in and we start editing the Excel spreadsheet, we forget that we need to enable the inbox. So I'd encourage you to do that right away. And then here's, the, once again, this is the Excel spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to settings down here at the bottom. And when you go to settings, you get this instance name and you can actually concatenate your survey one, two, three inbox entries. So if you don't do this, it'll pull and on your, and I'll show you the a picture of this later. It'll pull every attribute from each entry and show up on the inbox. But when we can concatenate this, it'll just pull up the attributes we want to show. So depending on what you want to show, this could be a really good thing, or it might not be something you even want to mess with. So now I'm showing you the survey one, two, after we publish the survey, it then you can then pull it up on your phone and I'm showing you that right now. So this is my Louisville Metro neighborhood cleanliness um, on my survey one, two, three app. As you see, you can go to inbox and then all your data is here. And this is what I was talking about when we did the concatenation. When we concatenated, we did the road name, as you see, South 30th Street, and then we did the assessment zone, and that's zone A. And if we hadn't done that, all of the attributes that were listed in our attribute table would show, so we'd have this big, long entry that we really didn't want our people in the field to see. So when you click on what, you can either do it in the list view, or you can go over to the map view, as you see below. As you see, I selected a street, and then you have your assessor litter score, your assessor litter score two, you got significant addresses contributing to the litter problem. What is the litter type? And I left this image in here because currently 
the inbox method does not support images. I've read up on some things and they say that eventually they are going to support images, but as of recently, when I checked, it still doesn't support images. So hopefully in the near future, that'll be available. And then right here, when you finish your survey, you can, survey is complete, you can send now, you can continue your survey, or if you're not finished with it, you can save the survey in the outbox until you're ready to complete the survey. So, so the pros to the survey one, two, three inbox methods for us is the visualization in the field. It's easy, it's on an app. Instead of having multiple paper forms, we just have our one app and then it's sent directly to our GIS team in the office. So we're able to visualize everything really quickly. It's quick and easy way to view and submit data in the field, like I just mentioned. Once someone in the field gets finished with us, finished with an entry, it's sent to us directly instead of having to go through each individual record on a paper form and then transferring the results to our GIS information. Okay. And the cons, attachments are not supported. So images are not supported yet with the inbox method, met, uh, with the inbox method, which is kind of a downfall for us because we really would like to take pictures too when we're out doing our litter assessments. But there are ways around it. We have our people in the field take photos and send them separately. So then we do have photos, but once those are supported, it would be, it would be a great thing. Quick reminders, here's the, um, like I said earlier, the concatenation versus the non-concatenation. To the left is the version of it that's not concatenated. And as you can see, there's a lot of different attributes in that entry. And then to the right is the one we concatenated. So you can see it's just brief and our people in the field can see that it's the street and the zone that they're in and they won't get confused by all the other uh, information. Uh, another reminder is just when you first get into the survey one, two, three desktop, go over here to inbox up here at the top, go to inbox and then enable your inbox before you get started doing your survey because it's just a quick way to remember it because once we get in and enter all that data, it's easy to forget that step. And then final reminder is just below here, your attribute table, make sure your records are as up to date as possible so you don't have to reshare the layer because it can just add time to your project. So that's another quick reminder. And and that's everything. Uh, thank you for your time. As you see, my email's here. Um, if you want to write that down, you can ask me questions about Survey123. Uh, um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. And uh, any questions, I can take them now. Nice job, Nathan. Uh, this is where you would normally hear lots of great applause from the uh, audience. Uh, there's one question in the chat from Gary he says, does the map view show that a particular survey has been completed or is it removed from the map? Yes, it will. Uh, if you go into the map view, um, it will remove the segment most of the time. And if you re go into it, you'll see where it's completed and it will have the data updated if you click on it again, so you will actually see where someone's edited that, um, that entry. So if, if it doesn't remove it from the map, you'll, you'll enter it and it will actually show the data. 
Hey, Nathan. Claire, uh, Claire Yates here. Hey, um, quick question. Um, can you um, tell us what you use the data for, um, how solid waste management like um, uh, leverages that data? So we're currently we're currently getting ready to use this. We haven't we haven't used it in the field yet. Uh, this was kind of an idea we came up with early this year to get away from the paper documents. So I'm not sure how they're going to use the data yet. I would just, they like to, um, we will make it usually with our paper documents and data that we come up through that. We will use, um, we'll make maps for them and they'll use it in their presentations that they do um, on recycling and litter in their neighborhoods. So they'll probably leverage that data in that way. They, they're more trying to bring awareness to the public about how we can improve the litter, um, littering and uh, uh, recycling in our neighborhoods in Louisville. Does that, does that answer your question or? Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? Well, hearing none, I uh, want to thank you again, Nathan. Uh, I want to thank Ryan for being our background moderator.